This is the PA Startup Podcast, episode number 15. This is the PA Startup Podcast, where we help pre-PA students, current PA students, and new grads start their careers as physician assistants. I'm your host, Chris Darst. We are glad you're here. Hey gang, welcome back to another episode of the PA Startup Podcast. This is episode number 15, which is another day in the life of series. Today, my guest is Jessica Harper. She is a physician assistant in general surgery. Uh, This is a very common place for PAs. It's an excellent place for PAs to use their skills. Uh, It is where I started in my PA career, so uh, it's near and dear to my heart. I hope you enjoy our conversation today. Real quick, before we jump in, uh, don't forget the uh, PA Startup Podcast is sponsored by Audible. You can get a free 30-day trial, including a free book, at uh, pastartup.co slash audible. If you've kept up with the podcast before, I have uh, I use Audible every month and I download uh, new books all the time to listen in the car, uh, things like that, and it's really taught me a lot. So I hope you'll check it out. It does support the PA Startup Podcast, which I greatly appreciate. Um, and real quick, before we start the interview, uh, I had a great conversation with Jessica, um, and we got to talking, and I try to keep these at 30 minutes, but we went to like 45, so I edited it down a little bit, uh, but it is a little longer, so I don't want to waste your time right here. But one quick reminder is just know that while all PA jobs in a specialty are similar in that you know the subject matter is similar, what your role is uh, might be change depending on which practice you're in. So take some of it with a grain of salt. Uh, you know, you just know that this isn't a definition of every job in general surgery, but it's just one, um, you know, one variation on the job, so to speak. Uh, but in my experience, what she's described here is very representative of a job in general surgery. But just remember that with these day in the life of series that uh, each region or each uh, even supervising physician might be a little bit different in how they do things. So, uh, but I hope you enjoy this. Uh, we had a great time, and uh, I'll be back afterwards to fill in any gaps. Jessica, how are you doing? I'm doing well. How are awesome. you? Awesome. Thanks. I'm great. Thanks for uh, joining with me. We are sitting in a classroom in our hospital right now, so yep. uh, it's a live interview. Um, before we get into it, mm-hmm. uh, I, I always ask people this, and I didn't tell you this beforehand, but um, if you would turn your phone on and tell me what your three most commonly used emojis are. My three most commonly used. <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> my laughy face. The one with the tears or? Yes. Okay. The tears. Mm -hmm. Um, The kissy face. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And uh, the (laughs) shaking my head, the one with the The emoji. Like the palm slap? Yeah, the palm slap. Excellent. All right. Well, I I find that that actually correlates with people's personalities really well. So (laughs) (laughs) Great. All right. Uh, So Jessica is a general surgery PA, Mm -hmm. uh, correct? And how long have you been in practice? Uh, It'll be two years uh, in June. Awesome. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, Now, tell me... Let's go way back real quick. Uh, what were you doing before PA school? What what made you want to go to PA school? Tell me about that. Okay. Well, it is kind of way back. Uh, I graduated from uh, Colorado State in 97 uh, as uh, exercise and sports science. And I uh, kind of concentrated in cardiac rehab because I really wanted to be on the rehabilitation side. Um, and I did that, you know, through through several like internships and really enjoyed it uh then i got married to an active duty army officer Mm -hmm. uh so there was a lot of moving involved (laughs) so i didn't get a lot of traction in cardiac rehab and ended up doing more personal training and spent a lot of time in gyms and um trying to really develop myself as a a preventative medicine type Mm -hmm. trainer I wanted to prevent lifestyle diseases I felt very strongly about that Uh, and so kind of every time we moved and I would have to start my business over I I really tried to make that niche gotcha gotcha how many times did you have to move do you think total we moved nine wow yeah so that would be hard if you're doing cardiac rehab type stuff to get you know 
plugged in somewhere only to just leave. But a gym is a little bit easier, I assume? To- Absolutely. And all the military posts have them. And, you know, there's there's always group fitness and uh, there's always a need for teachers. That's always a good in. Yeah. Um, and it offered child care. Oh, yeah. Perfect. <laughs> so, yeah. That's always good. Gotta yeah. have those benefits. That's right. Good deal. So then what made you switch from like the preventative medicine side of things to PA school? Well, my asthma is a big part of it. He was medical service corps. And so we were very involved with the medical community in the army and the military, as a lot of people probably know, uh, kind of established and really embraced the PA profession. And so just between my husband's profession and um, the army community, I got to know quite a few PAs uh, and, you know, got to see them in action and understood their jobs, uh, you know, as military practitioners and uh, as civilian practitioners. And it just really intrigued me. And I, I liked their autonomy, but I also liked the team mentality. So they were always working with, you know, other professionals, nurses and the physicians. And it just seemed the the variety of what they got to do. Yeah. So I uh, went to PA school. Uh, did you know kind of where you wanted to practice when you're done or I guess what specialty or did you say I want to stay close to home or what what factored into your decisions as you got closer to graduation well it it was really interesting because um I was positive I wanted to go into cardiology Hmm. and uh, I I thought for sure that's that's where my passion had been in, in heart health for all those years. Oh, yeah, and it made the most sense. Yeah. yeah. Natural. And so I thought, yeah, that's, that's what I'll do. And then, um, I really thought maybe orbit orthopedics because, uh, right before I started PA school, I decided to do an Ironman for some reason. Wow. And so I very, I, you know, between the, the training, I was like, oh, orthopedics, that's yeah, that's where I need to be. Sports I, medicine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I really need to, to keep on with my sports medicine. You're just trying to hold on to my past, I guess. <laughs> and uh, I will tell you, it was very interesting because the more, um, you know, we started studying and uh, I just, I, f- I felt really interested in everything the first two years of PA school. And then we get into rotations and that's a game changer. You know, oh, first, yeah. you love everything. And then I, I did, I got to my orthopedic rotation and, uh, I was like, I don't, I, there was too much redundancy, I guess. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I felt like the area that I was going to end up practicing, I'd have to pick a joint (laughs) and which I think is, is wonderful. And I think you can really master something in that aspect, but I really wanted a little bit more variety. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then. And uh, I tell you, when I did my general surgery, that was the one rotation. I was like, I don't know if I can be a PA. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, oh, no. Was what was like, it about that? Just it was hours hard. Or, yeah. It was the hours. And uh, I was so challenged. And it just, I really, uh, I did struggle in the OR at first because I wanted, I wanted to be good at it. And I, I just, you really don't appreciate how surgeons really spend a lot of time just perfecting their craft. They really do. And I just couldn't see the anatomy the way that I thought I'd see the anatomy. Um, I didn't understand it the way I thought I'd understand it. And so I really struggled um, and just felt like I was no good. (laughs) Yeah. It's (laughs) not like the book looks. No. You know, it's not color coded and it's not laid out nicely and everyone's a little bit different. So, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and OR skills are that. It's a skill. Yeah. And so it's like playing the piano or something where it's going to take a lot of practice to get good at it. Yeah. So, so but you forged ahead, right? I forged ahead. Well, I got to, I saved cardiology for last in my rotations because uh, I thought that that's it. Well, not only is, you know, majority of the board questions. So I was like, I'll just yeah. make sure I'm studying for both tests <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for right. boards and the, the end of rotation test. So I was like, you know, that'll be. I'm close to completion and I did, I have to tell you, I did not like cardiology. Is that right? Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, I didn't. Again, it was just too specific. Right. Um, and I just, it was just one of those things that didn't click for me. Mm -hmm. And I was really surprised because I really thought that that would be where my passion was. Yeah. That's funny that you mentioned that because I, I hated orthopedics Mm -hmm. and really hated cardiology during school. And I was like, ugh, you know, this is actually quite a bit of family practice and what am I going to do? I wanted to do something surgical, but I wasn't sure. But then rotations happened, loved orthopedics, you know, Cardiology was okay, but I loved cardiac surgery and I loved yeah. general surgery. I loved all of them. Although the hours in general surgery, the, the my preceptor was uh, 
love to work. And yeah. so I was like, <laughs> oh my word. Yeah. And it was right about the time this is shows my age, but well, I guess it's still on, but Grey's yeah. Anatomy was like yeah. the show. And right. that's what everyone was watching. And I'd come home and my wife was like, hey, let's watch Grey's. And I was like, ugh, I can't have <laughs> any more surgery or anything. I just, no. I need to be done. So, yeah, um, I understand. <laughs> okay, so you got done. And, and uh, props to you for timing out cardiology to be at the end of your rotations right before the pants exam because that is – quite a bit of the exam so that was yeah. well thought out good job yeah I just uh, I, I actually there was only a few requests I had in setting up my rotation schedules and it really had to do with testing yeah that's smart that's what <laughs> yeah. well, served you well yeah so. now so. Uh, when did you start looking for a job well, just like they tell you all the way, treat every rotation like a job interview. Mm -hmm. And so I did. And, um, you know, I just, you know, edited my resume every time. And I, I th so I feel like I started from the very beginning. Yeah. And I did my very best to keep in touch with people through uh, through rotations. And I, you know, I, I stayed local just because I knew I was going to be uh, there mm -hmm. <laughs> looking for a job yeah. there. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Um, so yeah, all along resume every, everywhere I went. Good. Yeah. So when you got to graduation, had you narrowed down, I'm looking for a surgical job or was it, I want to be local. I'll take what comes or, or what was your thought process there? So fortunately I, I did, have the job before graduation oh nice uh there they had where i'm working they had a turnover in staff and uh the office manager contacted me and said hey you did a rotation here we liked you i uh, thought you did a good job would you be you know can we review your resume um and interview and i was like absolutely oh yeah yeah can't, so can't ask for better that's perfect <laughs> yeah like, it did. oh i already spent a month, month with you i like you you like me this is this is perfect yeah it okay. worked out really well and i actually got the offer and i did interview and i actually got the offer um the, i think it was the day before graduation man that's yeah. great yeah it was very exciting <laughs> <laughs> i graduated and had nothing i mean i had interviewed but yeah. i hadn't didn't have any offers and yeah. i was like what now like right. this is uh, there's nothing else to do. I could study for the pants exam, but I was like, for what? Like right. I got nothing. I mean, it's stressful. So it very great. much is. But the other thing is I didn't, I knew a lot of people felt that way. And I felt that way starting from the very beginning. I felt like if I didn't have a job offer, I had somehow failed. And I think that's completely wrong. And I yes. think that it's not a good way to go into it. And I, I felt like I was watching people take the first jobs they were offered because of that fear. Yeah. 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 I just raised my hand because I was right. like, yep, that's exactly what I did. And so. actually, I, do, I remember your story now because. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We, we won't dwell on it, but. <laughs> yeah. It is. I, yeah. I kind of scrambled because I was like, why did I spend, you know, X number of years and X number of thousands of dollars going to PA school yeah. if there's nothing open and we didn't want to move and you know it's yeah but I like what you said that it's not it's not a failure you no. know if you graduate and you don't have a job that's actually probably more typical yes than having a job when you graduate absolutely and I don't know what your what was your class do you think like 50 50 or even less of people that had jobs to didn't have jobs um I think it I think it was 50 50 but I do recall uh, and actually addressing it too that you know People were slightly judgmental if you didn't have a job at graduation. Yeah. I was like, it's the jobs are limited here. Like we're in the middle of Nebraska. Like right, this. <laughs> right. Well, and there's four programs Absolutely. in a state that's not that big. So Absolutely. you've got, you know, you've got a lot of competition. Every six months, there's a new crop yep. of people that will do it cheaper, mm -hmm. or you know, yeah, people will take whatever. Whereas some of us are like, ah, I, yeah, I want to be paid accordingly you know I so. do I want to be paid accordingly and, and for me I really wanted to be in a job I wanted to stay in yeah and you know a lot of people go into this job thinking oh I'm versatile I can I can change whenever I want to if I don't like it I can always change and I I don't think that's a great mentality I right. mean it's it is an advantage absolutely yep. especially if you get yourself into a situation that you know this isn't working this isn't working for my lifestyle um, I'm not fitting on this team whatever right the 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 situation may be but I really wanted to make sure it was something I wanted to get very good at yeah and uh, it's a, a place I wanted to enjoy and stay and yeah. Uh, spend a long time in one job. Yeah, good. Well, good <laughs> yeah. for you. I think that's that's great advice, I think, for everybody to kind yeah. of not take the first thing and have a and have a goal of 
of staying somewhere for a long time. Yeah. Because I think a lot of people will say, well, I'll take this for now. Right. And then I won't be a new grad because I'll have experience. I'll and be then valuable. I'll, yeah, yeah. Then yeah. I can ask for more or go someplace else. And, you know, in some jobs that is beneficial. There's a lot of job postings that say experience required and stuff. Yeah. And so I understand it, but I'm with you where, you know, it's probably worth it to wait a, a month or two to get the job that you're going to, the culture fits you and, and you fit it and stuff like that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Cool. Agreed. So tell us, so general surgery, mm-hmm. uh, this is kind of the, the focus of today is, is we want to know what, what's it like being a general surgery PA? It is, um, very consistent with a lot of variety. I was trying to think why I like it so much. Yeah. We we do a lot of the same things, you know, exactly what I complained about orthopedics. <laughs> right, so, right. I mean, my most common uh, surgery is gallbladders, sure. cholecystectomies. Those are, you know, we do five to 10 a week. Yeah. But it's always just a little bit different. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we do hernias and, and bowel resections and lumps and bumps. And uh, my surgeon is a... Uh, breast cancer specialist. So we do a lot of breast cancer. And um, although it's, you know, it's a difficult, it's not a difficult surgery. It's very satisfying in that it cures a lot of these uh, women. Yeah. There's, I mean, we take the cancer out yeah. and a lot of them are done with it for some of them for the rest of their lives. That's so, awesome. Yeah. yeah. Do you get a lot of over, or I, again, do you get a lot of interaction with those patients? Yes, I do. And that is what I've enjoyed the most over the last year is really developing my clinical skills to be able to represent the surgeon, represent the surgeries and, you know, their their outcomes uh, and have them trust that even though I'm not the surgeon, I, you know, I'm, I'm the assistant, uh, that they feel comfortable to schedule whether they meet him then or the day of surgery. So, right. right. Yeah, it is. I do get a lot of interaction and I really enjoy that. Good. Yeah, yeah it is. A, a lot of people will say, you know, this, I get that a lot in cardiac surgery. Oh, it's the same. You know, you're just yeah. doing bypasses, but yeah. everything is, it's just a little different. Yep. And you've got to, you got to be sort of creative in how you handle, whether it's a gallbladder or it's bypasses or a valve or something like that, where I worked general surgery for two years and I, I would completely agree that cystic ducts in a little bit different spot and yeah. you know, everything's just a little bit different. So absolutely. Yeah. Well, take us through a day. What's a, what's, what's a typical day? Like, not like the, the JAPA article where it's just kind of like an overview of one, one specific day, but what's a general day that you would expect to have as a general surgery PA? Well, a general day, we try to start at seven thirty. uh, my physician really likes 730 cases and I, I agree it's a good way to to get started start get people they've been NPO past midnight <laughs> they're all hungry they they're want all, a cup of coffee yeah. and some bacon and yeah uh, <laughs> let's just get knocked out right <laughs> me too <laughs> yeah <laughs> right. only I can eat it you, yeah you can't you probably they shouldn't yeah <laughs> Um, we usually start at 7.30 on, uh, you know, a good general day. Um, we can do you know, anywhere from six to nine cases wow. um, on a Monday. Tuesdays and Thursdays tend to be, we will do a 7.30 case. Uh, Tuesdays tend to be our full day clinics, uh, which is post-ops, new surgery appointments, stuff like that. Um, there's some days we split the days, uh, again, starting at 7.30. You can do three to four surgeries in a morning or one great big surgery, depending, uh, and then clinic uh, one afternoon a week and then start it all over again Friday. Start at 7.30. All right. So you're in, so you're in clinic mostly Tuesdays, Thursdays? Yep. yep. And then maybe part of the day on Wednesday? Is that right? So it depends. Yeah. Kay. It really depends on uh, how busy the surgery schedule is. And uh, this the part that I like is being the extender. So if he has to be in surgery and we have clinic patients, I can go to clinic so he can basically be in two places at once. Sure. Sure. Which is really nice. Cause I mean, inevitably, as you know, you have a surgery that goes long and you know, we've got 15 patients. We, the right. Office. right. And the thought of rescheduling them is, is worse than dividing and conquering. Cause Absolutely. Like, uh, yeah. Uh, well, I've got 15 next week. Yes. So where are we going to put all these people? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what's the OR like for you? So, you know, in a, in a typical case, let's say the gamut, you mentioned gallbladders, you mm-hmm. know, what do you do in a gallbladder versus what do you do in a, a hemicolectomy or something like that? Right. Well, uh, my surgeon does a lot of laparoscopic or advanced laparoscopic surgeries. Uh, so depending on 
what kind of surgery it is. Gallbladders, yeah, I, I help place trocars, um, help run the camera, you know, retract the liver. Uh, I do a lot of the closing of the deep fashion and the skin closing. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. And that's all I always tell people. That's what people see. That's the yeah. only thing they have to go right. off of is, <laughs> are their symptoms better? And what does their incision look like? Exactly. And in my demographic, it's not as big of a deal, right. but, you know, but with young you know, young people, a lot of times it's like, whoa, that scarred. There's bruises or there's, you know. Yeah, absolutely. So it is a lot of pressure on your shoulders. And people, so. they, they are concerned very yeah. much. So as would I. So I do, right. I do a lot. I do my very best. And Brid- I would say particularly with breast surgery, you know, I oh, yeah. really want that closure. I, I want minimal scar. You know, mm-hmm. I, I don't want them to think about it every time they see that scar. Yeah, so, true. Yeah. So how about a big surgery? Let's say like a... Uh, you know, a, a perforated bowel or something like that. Like what is, what does that entail? Well, uh, he does try to do everything as laparoscopic as possible. Um, so I do run the camera, which there was such a learning curve that shocked me. You get so disoriented oh, yeah. <laughs> because you're looking at bowel on that camera. It all looks the same. Right. Um, at first. And you know, now I understand where he's going and I understand, uh, he's very, you know, surgeons are very methodical and all you have to do is learn their method. And it's amazing how the anatomy really comes to life and you really understand it. Um, so it, bells, we start laparoscopically as much as possible. And, uh, you know, I'll run the camera, um, again, place trocars, retract, uh, stuff like that. Uh, if we do open cases, I do a lot of retraction. I can tie off vessels. I help with the stapler. Um, if we have to do resections or anything like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then again with closures. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of the, the uh, way it was described to me was that, you know, a PA in surgery should be like the surgeon's got four hands. Right. And yeah. that comes from what exactly what you said, knowing their method. You know, yeah. how do they go through it, anticipating what they're going to do next or what they're looking for and helping them look for it. Right. But, you know, ideally once you've been down that path of, of – um, learning then all of a sudden you're you're a full participant in the surgery so, absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. That's and, cool. and it's nice when you get to the point where you can catch things now you're like oh we you know we missed a step there and oh okay yeah we forgot the endo catch packer you know even little stuff sure it, it's looking nice at the stuff. table seeing what's on the table what's yeah. coming next or yeah um you know if you're looking at a lot of times we'll discuss the anatomy you know we'll say do you think what do you think about this or what do you think about this angle or you know, things like that. And it's, it's kind of cool to watch it go from, you know, I've watched new grads where they're intimidated and they're scared, yeah. go all the way to, no, 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 let's do it this way. You know, offering suggestions that all of a sudden is like, yeah, yeah, let's do that. Yeah. That's a good suggestion. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah. It's pretty fun. <laughs> that so. is. I agree. So l- what about clinic? So you're in, you know, you're in surgery those days. Mm-hmm. You, now that you've got clinic patients. Do mm-hmm. you see everybody with the surgeon? Do you see people independently? How does that work in your office? Well, it's a little bit of both. Uh, I do a lot of the new patient uh, consultations, um, which if he's there, then he'll follow to, to either, you know, agree with the recommendation or, you know, offer another suggestion. Um, for post-ops, a lot of them are pretty easy, which is nice. So it's just whoever gets to it first uh, to keep the, the clinic flowing. Um, he, you know, occasionally does office procedures. So uh, if he's doing an office procedure, then I continue to to get through the patients. If if somebody needs to see him for uh, a reason, they you know usually they wait <laughs> a right. little bit. But uh, so it's really a mix. Yeah. Um, I'm always surprised at how many I see independently, and um, you know there's and there's always inevitably a day I I apologize like I'm I'm sorry you're gonna you're repeating all my work. I need to, I need you to check out all these patients because I just don't know. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That is one good thing about the profession too, is that, you know, you can always appeal to them and say, you know, I can handle 85% of what comes my way, but there's still going to be 15% that I got to ask about or exactly as you're learning too. you know, two years in is still, you know, still new. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) I mean, you're, you're, you're seasoned as far as, you know, yeah, you've got the basics down and stuff like that, but there's still room to grow in in any specialty, whether it's family practice or general surgery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so to always have the ability to just be like, I think I know what the right thing to do is, but let me just run this past you. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing it for 10 years and I still will say, Hey, how come we do this? You yeah. Know, like I know we do it, but why? You yeah. Know? And so it's, it's nice to be able to bounce ideas off of people and, and get, 
explanations <laughs> yes, <laughs> when you need them. Yeah, absolutely. And they, you know, sometimes some patients just don't make sense. And yeah. You're like, I, I, I'm at a loss and <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what they're even asking right now. Yeah. So. And it's always a little bit validating when the, with the physician is like, uh, I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. No kidding. When yeah. you're like, yeah, okay, okay. We're on the same page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Typically what happens to me is I'll go in and I'll talk to him and they'll give me one story. Mm-hmm. I'll come tell the surgeon oh. about it. And then you go in and everything's completely different. Yes. Oh, they're having horrible pain. They can't sleep. There's no appetite. And you go in there and they're like, nope, sleeping great, eating great. Yeah. Everything's fine. Yeah. Historical alternons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Well, sometimes you have to just kind of, you know, yeah. smile and laugh and move on. So, yeah. Good. What's your favorite part of your job? Uh, I really think it is the patient and people interaction. Um, I, I really like the fact that we fix people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do. I, the, you know, take a gall. If you have ever had a bad gallbladder and once it's out, people feel so much better and they're so grateful. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I do. That's one of my favorite things. I really enjoy this community of medical professionals. Oh, that's um, cool. Yeah. And I think, you, like you said, because there's so many programs here, uh, a lot of us knew each other as students. We uh, were preceptored by each other. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've just really enjoyed that, too, and watching everybody get more ingrained in their profession and, and more knowledgeable. And then, you know, being able to preceptor and help the next group that comes through. Yeah, so yeah I, for sure. I really enjoy that. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Um, What's your least favorite part of the job? Call. <laughs> yeah, isn't that the case? Uh, call. That's call. like a swear word. It is. Well, but my positive reinforcement is there's a lot of things we see on call that you don't see in the clinic. And so there's that always makes it a little bit interesting. Yeah. And if there is an opportunity to have an interesting surgery that you just don't see very often and and people have you know weird things happen uh they get to be a part of figuring out um i do like that aspect of call yeah there's always it's always uh makes for a good story i mean not always but a lot of times it's like man i can't believe we're doing this you know (laughs) okay this is kind of worth it yeah absolutely i always i i take a bit of call in my job and um the I would have to explain to my kids, you know, why I'm gone, yeah. you know, and, and why I have to leave in the middle of dinner or something mm-hmm. like that. And what really worked for me, uh, and not for you, but more for the audience mm-hmm. is that, um, it's totally stinks to have to leave all the time. But I always think if my family member needed that, I would want someone to leave Thanksgiving dinner and Absolutely. come help my family member and yeah. stuff like that. So it, it doesn't make it easier when right. you're, you know, sitting in the lounge waiting for the case to start or you know thinking about all the stuff that you're missing but it does give you a little consolation that you know uh, okay yeah absolutely I'm sure it's this this way for you as well you have it ebbs and flows like you can be super busy for several weeks um and you very quickly forget the the slower times oh yeah Um, yeah yeah it's funny how that works it's feast or famine absolutely and if it's famine everyone's freaking out because like what's gonna happen how are we gonna make our bills yeah and then feast is kind of a misnomer because no one's really like enjoying it they're like when's it gonna slow down it's never slow so much (laughs) yeah Yeah, that's funny um did anything jump out at you as you started practicing as a PA that um surprised you like something that you didn't expect you'd have to do or or something that you didn't think you'd get to do but now you you do have that responsibility anything that surprised you well uh surgery specific I knew nothing about how much of this of the da Vinci robot was going to be uh part of practice and that surprised me how it's being incorporated so much into laparoscopic uh, practices and even uh, CT. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I just can't believe it. <laughs> I feel, and I know it's been around a while, and I know you know a lot of our surgeons have been using it for several several years, uh, but I had no idea that that would be within my scope of practice and to actually participate in uh, a training for that and to be the bedside surgeon while they're at the console. Yeah. I mean, that, that's, it terrified me at first because <laughs> I didn't get to do, I just watched as a student, you know, sure. and there's only so much robot you can watch. It's like, I could watch this on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't need to be standing here. I could be in yeah. my pajamas. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah. um, to really, to, to learn that, um, has really surprised me that I got that opportunity. 
I yeah. had no idea. Yeah. The Da Vinci is uh, it's a, a robot that we use for surgery made by Intuitive Surgical. Um, mm, yeah. If if anyone wants to buy one out there, we would <laughs> Jessica and I would take a cut of the. Absolutely. <laughs> they're like a million bucks or, or so. But yeah. yeah, I know. What do I would <laughs> give just, or take? Just ten percent is all we need. Right. Um, but no, it's a it is a really cool uh, robot. We do use it in cardiothoracic, much like General. Yeah. Um, it's it's popular in neurology and OBGYN and things. So right. Um, but but yes, our job as PAs, and that is actually I, f- I forget about that. But yeah. That is a big role of the surgeon is, you know, uh, if, if it's my surgeon, he's sitting in his socks yeah. at the console. He <laughs> takes his too. shoes off. Yeah. And <laughs> it's I don't know why, but <laughs> maybe more, they can feel the pedals, but, uh, they sit at the console and then, you know, we're up at the table passing instruments in and out using the assistant port. Yeah. Um, you know, one of the, the terrifying parts for me was, uh, there's no, what they call haptic feedback. So the surgeon can't feel the tissue through the robot. They, I mean, yeah. you can see that you're on it, but you can't feel any tension. And so when we were looking for a lung nodule or something, mm-hmm. I would stick a device, you know, a, a grasp or something through the port and said, you feel it? And you know, you rub it over the surface of the lung. He said, are you sure you feel it? And sometimes I'd be hitting the bed. Be yeah. Like, yeah I'm, I'm running to something. Yeah. Well, that's the bed. Uh, <laughs> hold on. He's like, are you kidding me? <laughs> so, yeah. So that is, but yeah, you yeah. are the bedside surgeon and yeah. you are, you know, if, if, if it hits the fan, it's your job to hold Absolutely. pressure and, and undock the robot and get the arms out of the way. And yeah. Have to open. Hopefully Do, that hasn't happened. No, no, not yeah. uh, not for us. But is um, you know we've had troubleshooting, which is always tricky, um, just electronically because it's technology, yeah. and I think everybody has just a little bit of a limitation <laughs> in for understanding sure. technology. For sure. so, yeah, I know. If I can yeah. get Wi-Fi on my kid's <laughs> iPod, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. Uh, well, tell me any crazy patient stories, anything crazy happened to you either on call or in the OR or in the office, anything that stands out as like, you're at a party, you're going to tell a story, this is the story you'd tell. Yeah. Well, there, there's some call stories that... Yeah, it would have to be at a party. <laughs> yeah, this is a, we try to keep it family friendly. <laughs> we do, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, there's been some very interesting things that we, we find in bowels, and uh, it's really interesting <laughs> what people don't chew. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like to, is that right? Yeah, it c- causes bowel obstruction, kids. <laughs> chew your carrots. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> yeah. So, like, people are swallowing, they're not chewing their food. Yeah. And they yeah. swallow it down. It, it happens in, in older populations. And I, you know, there's uh, surgeons are like, oh, yeah, it's, I, I've seen that before. Bowel obstruction and can be like corn and carrots and grapes and stuff and people and it can be in this older population that maybe don't too because they've got dentures or don't have their dentures or whatever sure, sure. um and just the havoc that can wreak on your intestines and you have to go to surgery to have that part of your intestine oh, cut out man that's crazy yeah. i know i do remember one of a, a it was like the little plastic um like clip that comes on a bread bag yeah not a twist tie but just a little plastic thing that like snaps on the thing a little, little, little old lady had it in her bowel, had a bowel obstruction. You <laughs> yeah. go pull it out and you're like, oh, I know what yeah. this is. It's from <laughs> right. like old home bread or something. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's got the logo on it and everything. Yep, and everything. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> well, uh, thinking back to uh, the Jessica that was going to start school, now mm-hmm. that you've been out, what advice would you give her? I think particularly when it comes to school, one of the things I really remember uh my change in my attitude. Grades are very important in your undergrad. Um, I think shadowing is also very important. Uh, and that patient experience, you know, the CNA is great, but I think really if you have the opportunity to, to really shadow a clinic day, uh, if you have the opportunity to, to shadow in a hospital, just kind of see the workflow, not only for the patient interaction, but all the other stuff we have to do as far as documenting and um, you know, reviewing and, and discharge summaries, you know, all the little stuff. Um, pay attention to that so that when you do get your HMP, tra- you know, or your documentation classes, you're like, okay, I see the practical application for this because uh, it's tedious when you don't have a real patient. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's really hard to grasp mm-hmm. and the order and why you're doing it and the things that you need to pay attention to, pay attention to when you're talking to a patient um, cause I just remember at first it was like everything I would put all the information in to include their dog's name and what their dog ate, you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah. it was just so tedious. And, uh, 
I never really paid attention to the specific questions and what you're trying to, to, to get after. Yeah. So I think shadowing in your undergrad, I think paying attention to your grades in your undergrad is very important, but I think through PA school, it's, the grades are important. You want to do well, but nobody's asked me my GPA. Mm -hmm. They want to know that I understand the content and really studying to to understand the content, to understand your physiology, to understand your pathophysiology, uh, because that's the scariest thing when you get out is starting to make these clinical decisions. You're like, oh, it's easy to do it for you know a vignette. Right. Like I don't, I don't don't know if this isn't a real person. Yeah. But then suddenly you're in clinic and you're like, okay, I have to decide if this person needs surgery or not. Like this is a big deal. Right. right. <laughs> Going to surgery. Yeah. Even though it's a gallbladder and we see them all the time. This impacts their life. They're going to be nervous the day before. Everybody always, at, not everybody, but a lot of people are like, uh, I'm going to wake up, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, really uh, understanding content, pathophysiology, so that you can really explain it to somebody. Not answer, just answer a multiple choice. Like, you really need to understand it and relay it to somebody else. Yeah. Um, and I think that really that was the focus that really changed how I studied mm -hmm. and that's how, great advice. Yeah. How I applied it. Cause yeah, everybody freaks out about tests. And I think, um, if you are a traditional student going straight from undergrad to grad school, you're scholastically focused. You're mm -hmm. focused on tests. You have been testing your entire life. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, really understanding content and how it's going to apply needs to be more of the focus. And you know what? Sometimes that means you're going to get a B on a test because if you think through a, a questionnaire, there's more than one right answer. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. The the tests, I mean, if you're studying to understand the material, mm -hmm. you'll do okay on the tests yeah. and you'll pass. Yeah. I don't, will it be an A plus? Maybe not. Right. But that's not the goal. The goal is to understand it yeah. because I, w I made the mistake of studying for the test yeah. because I was like, okay, I just want to get a great grade. Yeah. Well, that's great. But guess what? When I'm standing out in the hallway, you know, Googling some condition, I'm like, <laughs> I should know this. You know, right. I remember feeling like this is just, I should have caught this the first time and I didn't. And, right. you, you know, and yeah, you have a patient that you're going to prescribe a medicine to or, or schedule for surgery or something that this has real effects on people. This isn't, Absolutely. like you said, a little vignette where you're in cardiology, you're talking about arrhythmias. And, well, okay, it's going to be an arrhythmia is right. the problem. But yeah. when you're in the ER... Yeah. at midnight and yeah. everyone else is busy. You're like, Oh, I, I got to come up with the answer here. <laughs> well, and then I have to prescribe a medicine that's going to change the way your heart beats. Yeah. Like that's, mm, that's <laughs> I really deal. need to understand this. <laughs> My name's going to be on that. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, exactly. They're going to remember who did this. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, all right. One more question for you and then yeah. I'll let you go. But what, uh, advice would you give either yourself at graduation or a new grad that's about to start? Is there anything that would be like your, your one, nugget of advice that you'd pass on do not be afraid to make mistakes particularly those first two years you are not expected to know everything you're expected to know a lot and be responsible and learn uh, from your mistakes but don't don't be afraid to ask questions um I, I think really embracing what you don't know yeah yeah <laughs> knowing you what start, you don't know yeah and right. trusting that your employer uh, knows that and is going to train you up. So, yeah, really uh, let go of that fear because the, getting rid of that fear of failing or being wrong um, really is freeing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, that takes a lot of pressure off your back, you know, from yeah. I don't need to know the, all the answers, but I need yeah. to learn from it and continue to grow as a provider. So. Yeah, absolutely. Sweet. All right. Well, thank you so much. Well, thank this has you. Been great. I yeah. appreciate it. Um, yeah, thanks. I will put some show notes together. Um, anything else that we missed or that you think is important for pre PA and current PA and new grad students? No. It just, it's never going to be enough money, just so you know. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> you like, can always, everyone deserves a raise, always. Everyone, it never, always. It'll, it'll never, never be, be enough. enough. And even if you get it, it'll only be good for a little while. <laughs> right. you want another one. So, yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for your time today. All right. Thank you so much. All right, party people. That was my interview with Jessica Harper, general surgery PA. Um, I think she hit on some great points. You know, her favorite parts of the job, her least favorite parts of the job. 
Um, you know, just the the skills that she was surprised about. The Da Vinci robot is uh, becoming more and more popular, and we're seeing it more and more specialties, and that's a great opportunity for us to uh, show our skills and show that we, you know, we do a great job as PAs, and uh, it's just one more uh, opportunity to share that. So I uh, hope you like this episode. You can check out the show notes at pastartup.co slash episode 15. Uh, head over to the website, uh, check out our resources there. Um, and then, of course, the Audible trial at pastartup.co slash audible. Uh, I would love it if you would leave us a rating and review on iTunes. Um, just head over there, uh, give us uh, a rating there, leave a, leave us a review. I would love to hear from you, uh, hear what you want to hear more of, hear what you want to hear less of, um, those sorts of things. And definitely hit me up on Twitter. Um, I try to check in there and, and respond back to anybody who posts about the podcast or the guests or the questions that you might have, um, you can uh, check us out, pastartup.co, and dot is, is spelled out, D-O-T. Uh, so we're on Twitter. And then, of course, questions for our question and answer episodes can be directed to questions at pastartup.co. My goodness, that is a lot of instructions. I apologize for all of these websites and emails. Uh, basically, pastartup.co is going to be your destination uh, if you want to look uh, into more resources that we've got, and uh, we can go from there. All right. Um, hang in there, guys. I hope, uh, you know, wherever you are in the process, whether you're considering it, uh, you're in the trenches of PA school or you're a new grad uh, and you're out and about, uh, I hope this is helping you. So um, hang in there. I hope things are well and stay out of trouble. All right. See ya. I really think there's a, a huge difference, honestly, between the bachelor and the bachelorette. Uh, the bachelor, you have a bunch of classy ladies uh, vying for attention, and the bachelorette, you've got a bunch of meathead dorks who are um, just e- embarrassing. That's all I got to say about that. Be right back. <laughs>